When it comes to producing a great saxophone sound, you want to keep in mind there are three main components that have to work in balance in order for the whole machine to work, in order for the saxophone to work. And these are your embouchure, the diaphragm, and the throat. Today we're talking about the embouchure and the three most common mistakes that students take to make when it comes to sound and what you can do to have a better sound, a more relaxed sound, essentially sound better without having to put that extra physical effort into it. So you ready? Let's get started. Hey, Martino here at the London Saxophone School, bringing you new tutorials every week on how to improve your saxophone skills and become a better musician. I run the London Saxophone School in London, where we do classes, ensembles, workshops, events, concerts. So if you're new to the channel and want to see more online content, uh, just consider subscribing and hit the little bell. I've taught thousands of students over the years, out of which hundreds are beginner and intermediate players. And I've noticed how these players tend to make the same mistakes over and over and over when it comes to embouchure and when it comes to producing a great sound and actually they're struggling recognizing when they are hitting that sweet spot. So today we're talking about these three main things that are the most common things. The first mistake that I see in students is related to the amount of mouthpiece that you have in your mouth. You want to know something. Depending on where you put your mouth on the mouthpiece, you're going to get a different sound. So the way I teach this is uh, you want to be able to tell and to know what sound you get depending on where you put the mouth. Let me explain it. Let's do it together. So we got to know the extremes. We got to know what happens, what sound you get in the whole register of the mouthpiece. So let's do this together. Try playing at the very, very tip of the mouthpiece and see what sound you get. You do it first and then I'll do it. So your turn. Okay, and now I'll try. I'm gonna play the very tip. Very tip, okay? So that's one, that's one extreme. Now let's go all the way in. So everything in your mouth, all the mouthpiece in your mouth. You do it first and then I'll do it. Your turn. Excellent, and now my turn. So everything in. Okay, so knowing this, we know that here at the tip, we have no sound or very weak sound. And here we have a sound, but it's pretty scratchy, horrible, harsh, so it just doesn't work, okay? So now that you know the extremes, your brain will go like, okay, here doesn't work, here doesn't work, let's go, boom, let's go halfway between the two. So now go around, it's, it's not halfway, it's more like two thirds in, but just, then just play. Sorry, your turn first. Excellent, and now my turn. And that works, okay? So remember, you wanna know the extremes. You wanna know what happens at the tip and you wanna know what happens if you have the whole mouthpiece in your mouth because then the brain will process that in, in a different, deeper way. And then when you go to the sweet spot, you, you just have to fine tune that and you get the perfect sound. Now, the second thing that happens a lot with students is related to the amount of pressure from your lips to the mouthpiece. There's basically two things that can happen. You either are doing too much with your lips or you're doing too little. <clears throat> and the aim here is to find the right balance between the two things. Let's look at both. So if you're doing too much, this is what happens. I'm gonna play a, a long note and then I'm gonna start to squeeze my muscles over here and see the sound that I get. Okay, so in this case, I have my, my beautiful note coming out and then as, as, as soon as I start squeezing with my muscles, you know, there's less air going through the horn, so there's less sound coming out. Check this out. Pretend this is the mouthpiece and this is the reed, okay? And this is my mouth. Can you see me? Okay. So when I produce a normal note, I have the right amount of pressure from my lips so everything works and it flows. As soon as I start, in, I start to put more pressure, extra pressure from my lips here, what happens? I reduce the amount of space here, right? 
so the read kind of goes, goes up a little bit and I have less space for air to go through and that's when I get that weird um, strangled um, sound it's like now don't laugh but what happens if you take your hands and you start pressing against your throat and then you, then you try to talk you get a different voice <clears throat> and it actually kind of hurts but it's the same principle you know if you apply pressure here there's less air going through so you have less voice here the same thing if you apply too much pressure from your lips you're gonna get less sound in your horn okay on the other hand if your amperature is too loose um, let's see what happens so you need some kind of tension some kind of pressure to put the reed in vibration okay if there's not if there's no pressure on the reed then there's nothing nothing's gonna happen so as soon as you drop this you start to have your pitch going down until you get nothing okay so if your sound if your intonation is pretty wobbly and um, if your notes are sounding really weird then it might be because your ambusher is not tensing enough now the third thing that we're going to talk about is related to the chin chin pressure and chin position if you take a look at these pictures from my students you're going to see that they actually do something like this okay they play like this Can you see how much I'm doing my chin over here? Okay, that is a common thing that happens with the beginner, some intermediate students as well. And so we need to bring this down in order for the reed to vibrate. Everything we've seen so far is about letting the reed vibrate properly. If you put too much tension when we, one way or the other, either with here or too much pressure from the lips, then the reed is gonna say, you know what, I don't like that, uh, and then it won't vibrate properly and will give you a good sound. Firstly, I need to ask you something. Are you able to do this kind of movement here? Put it down in the comments if you want to, so I can, I can actually know um, and help you out. So if you are able to do that, awesome. Uh, next time you play, be sure to bring this a little bit lower. But what happens if you're not able to do that? And there's two ways that I teach this. Firstly, bite your lip and then bring this up and down. Okay, if that is too hard, uh, we can do this. Bite your lip, then squeeze your chin, and then with your finger, pull it down. This is what I mean. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As you pull it down with your finger, you're still trying to resist the movement of the finger. So this is basically still engaged. And that is only to increase awareness of the brain. So those are the two ways you can you can do that to, to learn that. Because once you once this is a little bit lower and a bit more relaxed, the reed would have more space to vibrate. It's like asking a drummer. Check it out. If you ask the drummer, uh, go like, Mr. Drummer, can you play, can you crush the cymbal? And the drummer goes like, yeah, sure, but there's a little trick. You put a little blanket on top of that cymbal and, and you, you ask the drummer to play it. But because they had, there's the blanket on the cymbal, the drummer won't be able to have a full sound. As soon as you take the blanket halfway out or halfway, or halfway off or, or all the way off, then the symbol will actually be able to vibrate again. Same thing here. If you do this, you know, it's like having, it's like playing with a blanket on top of the symbol. As soon as you take off the blanket and you bring this down, then the reed will be able to vibrate properly. Now, everything we talked about is all about letting the reed vibrate freely. If there's anything blocking the air, going through the horn then you're basically gonna be reducing the amount of space between the reed and the and the mouthpiece so there's gonna be less air going through which translates into having into you having less sound remember the ambusher is just a pure point of contact between you and the saxophone and this okay that's it okay so you just want to let the air that you're producing 
go into the horn freely without any kind of obstacle. If you want to see more videos on how to play with a great sound, uh, check out this video here on how to play with an open throw, which is a really important component of, of sound production. And also you can watch this video here on embouchure basics. Question of the day. What is your main problem when it comes to embouchure? What have you tried? What, how have you corrected it? Have you succeeded? Uh, are you having any troubles with specific notes? Let me know in the comments below and I'll give you tips on how to fix that. Also, you can join our private Facebook group called Saxophone Masters, where I'll be there personally replying to, to comments. So you're free to post comments, um, um, questions, and also videos So for the community and for myself to help you out. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and hit the little bell, and I'll see you next week. Embouchure Mistakes intro, take one. Run that if I play this. Okay.